Hey everyone, Jordan here with 9 to 5 Toys, and today we want to check out the Scepter 44 inch ultra wide gaming monitor. Now, there's no denying the benefit of having an extra wide monitor at your desktop for working from home, but the benefits are also starting to creep into the gaming world as well. While not all games and resolutions benefit from a picture twice as wide as the standard 16 9 ratio, they can lend themselves to a more immersive experience, especially in some certain types of games like racing games. So, we got the opportunity to check out the Scepter E448 44 inch monitor and see how it performs in both working and gaming environments. So let's dive in and take a closer look at the Scepter 44 inch ultra wide gaming monitor. Thanks for watching 9to5toys. Be sure to like, subscribe, and enable notifications with the bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming videos. So at its core, the Scepter 44 inch gaming monitor is a 32 by 9 aspect ratio. So it's pretty much like two 16-9 monitors, which is pretty standard, uh, stitched together into one ultra wide screen here. And that puts the resolution at 3840 by 1080. And we are starting to see more of these, you know, super widescreen monitors come onto the market. And they really do offer a pretty unique experience when it comes to gaming and also productivity and working from home. The Scepter E448 44 inch monitor is currently priced at $530 on Amazon. And diving into the design here, one of the most noticeable things is that there's no curve to this monitor. You know, a lot of these super wide monitors have at least a little bit of a curve. Uh, I've been using the Monoprice Dark Matter 49 inch monitor for a while, and that has the 1800R curve, uh, which is a little bit more subtle. But then there are some other monitors like the Samsung Odyssey G9, which has that 1000R curve, which is even more extreme and wraps around you a little bit more for a more immersive gaming experience. But Scepter on this one has decided to go with a flat panel, which is pretty unique for this size. And using this for a while now, I am getting used to the flat panel of the Scepter, so it's really not that big of a deal. Otherwise, I really dig the design of the Scepter E448 44 inch monitor though. The white colorway with small bezels looks really sleek and modern. And in back, there are all the ins and outs, as well as RGB lighting that has a few different settings within the menu. By default, the Scepter features a spectrum color mode on that back RGB panel, which can cycle through all the standard RGB rainbow colors, but then color can also be set to breathing, strobe, or static with a variety of colors and brightness options. And one feature that I really like about the design here is that it's very easy to raise and lower the monitor. So just built into the back there has a support where you can easily raise it and lower it. And it's not, you know, so easy that you can bump it and it'll move, but it's also, you know, easy enough to do with one hand. It's not like it needs, it requires a lot of force or a lot of work. So that's something that was lacking on the mono price that I really appreciate on the Scepter 44. All of the ports are easy to see and reach on the back of the monitor. From left to right, we have connections for USB-C, an HDMI 1.4, HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort 1.2, and the 3.5 millimeter audio out, which they have labeled for headphones. And then over on the other side of the stand is a built-in USB-C hub with three USB-A 3.0 ports and a USB-B 3.0 port. All right, and moving on to display specs, Scepter is using an IPS panel on this 44 inch monitor. With a resolution of 3840 by 1080, it's like having two 1080 panels stitched together with a 32 by nine aspect ratio. I love a 32 by nine aspect ratio for productivity. It is just like having two monitors stitched together and I can have, you know, a bunch of windows open. Usually I'll have my Slack chat over here with the whole nine to five crew. I'll have a couple of browser windows for, you know, writing a script, doing research. And likewise, when I am editing videos, being able to fill up the screen with, you know, media library over on one side, a nice big timeline in the middle. And then um, if you want to, you can put your program over here on the side and make that a little bit bigger. I, I do think that just uh, has a lot of benefits with an ultra wide monitor like this. But that being said, from a productivity standpoint, you still might benefit a little bit more by something with higher resolution, uh, looking for that 5120 by 1440p resolution. From a gaming standpoint, it is a mixed bag for me. Uh, that's probably mainly because I usually play FPS games. Uh, that's what I usually play with my friends. And so having the extra width on here just throws in a lot of extra pixels. There's a lot more things to look at. And you know, for the performance cost, I don't usually see the benefit of that uh, because it is just kind of overwhelming you know playing warzone it'll put a lot of the hud details over in the corner so everything is a little bit harder to see and it feels like you have to kind of look around to find any information about what's going on but in other games like star wars squadrons for example uh, the extra wide monitor adds a lot more immersion and is an absolute blast it actually feels more like you're in the cockpit and likewise with racing games like forza 7 having the extra width in there just adds some more immersion and makes it 
a really enjoyable experience when you are racing on the grid. And taking that into consideration, if you are building out a race sim rig, you know, this might be a really good choice because of that price point, $530. Continuing with the specs, the Scepter 44 inch monitor has a one millisecond response time and does up to 120 hertz refresh rate with a 125% sRGB color gamut. And that's all pretty impressive for an ultra wide gaming monitor like this coming in at just over $500. And thanks to the IPS panel, the viewing angle is rated at 178 degrees, that as I move my head to the left or right in front of the different sections of the panel, the sides appear to be a bit dim, whatever I'm not directly facing. It's still visible at extreme angles, but it's just not quite as bright as when you are looking at it straight on. And so this is one point where I think that, you know, having a curved panel on here might help to kind of mitigate some of that a little bit, where, you know, like whatever's directly in front of you looks bright, but as you look, kind of look off to the left and right and move your head back and forth, you can kind of see that brightness changing a little bit. So whatever you are directly facing is the brightest section and starts to lose a little bit as you look to the sides. And marketed as a gaming monitor, you're of course gonna want a very clear picture in really chaotic scenes. And one feature on here that can help clear that up is the moving picture response time or MPRT feature that they have built into the menu. Turning MPRT onto low, medium, or extreme helps to greatly reduce blurring, but at the cost of some brightness. And while this won't be a totally accurate representation, obviously you can see we have studio lights in here. Uh, it is daytime outside, even though it's a little bit cloudy, we have a lot of you know ambient light in here, but I am gonna play around with the picture and turn that MPRT on so you can see what it does to the brightness. So it was on off, now it's on low. This is medium and this is extreme. So you can kind of see what it does to the brightness there. It does take that down and reduce the brightness significantly. But if you are playing at night or in a room that has some more you know, controlled uh, lighting situations, that's probably not gonna be that big of a deal. Uh, during daytime with the studio light on, uh, this is obviously, uh, for me, probably a little bit too dim. So I would turn that off you know, if I am editing a video or you know, writing some scripts or doing something here at my desk. But here, let's dive in and take a look at the UFO motion blur test to see you know what exactly that extreme setting does compared to off. So that setting can make a huge difference to clarity when you are playing, you know, really intense games with a lot of action going on that you want to make sure everything's clear and that you can track all the action. The Scepter 44 inch monitor has also been VESA certified for display HDR 600, uh, which means it can get up to a peak brightness of 600 nits. And once again, for a monitor with 120 hertz refresh rate that is this wide, 600 nits is pretty good as well. And the colors look pretty good on here. I haven't gone in and calibrated it yet. Uh, that's something I might do. That's something I did do on the Monoprice 49 inch monitor, which I think helped out a lot with color. And so, you know, if you are doing some more productivity center kind of things, like if you're doing some photo editing or video editing, you're probably gonna wanna calibrate this just to make sure that picture is a little bit more accurate, but even just out of the box in its stock form, I've been pretty happy with the color. I think that uh, there's some great saturation, but it's not overdone. And uh, likewise, I don't think that, you know, blacks are too mushy or anything like that. And since the monitor is basically the size of two monitors stitched together, there are a couple of other modes you can turn this monitor into to utilize that screen a little bit differently. You can either do picture by picture which will split the screen down the middle and you can have one input on the left and another input on the right or you can do picture in picture which will put another input you know in the corner of the screen if you want to do something like that so uh, for me this is kind of handy if i'm playing xbox you know testing a controller but i also still want to write a script about that controller uh, i can have my xbox over here and then i can have my pc over on this side and you know i can still write my script while i'm gaming as well so that's a pretty nice feature that i use a lot on the Monoprice Dark Matter 49. Unfortunately, it hasn't been quite as seamless on the Scepter as it is on the Monoprice Dark Matter 49 though. When I do flip over to that picture by picture mode, uh, which puts the Xbox on one side and the PC on the other side, it's like the monitor uh, by default is trying to squish the entire 32.9 image into a 69 image. So it is kind of squished a little bit. There is a way to fix that by just playing around with the refresh rates. Like if you, um, Right click on the screen, you can go into display settings and then click on, uh, we can change your resolution here if you have to, but you can also click on advanced display settings and change your refresh rate. So between playing with this and then also 
changing some settings in this display adapter properties for display one, which also lets you change the refresh rate. Um, I was able to get it to actually uh, open up and you know fill the screen how it's supposed to in the 16 by nine image. But it doesn't do that just stock when I turn on the Xbox and turn to that mode. Uh, it's just a little bit frustrating. The monitor does have audio as well. It has built-in speakers, uh, but they're nothing to write home about. Uh, you're probably not really going to want to use these very often. I would definitely recommend getting some desktop speakers or uh, you know, a good pair of headphones if you are going to be gaming mainly with this thing. You're definitely going to want some sort of audio setup rather than the built-in speakers on here. So overall, wrapping up here, the Scepter 44-inch ultrawide monitor is an interesting monitor to me. From a gaming standpoint, the 3840 by 1080p resolution makes sense, as it would help to boost frame rate performance with those extra pixels from the image. But from a productivity standpoint, I do miss the extra resolution of a 1440p monitor like the Dark Matter Monoprice 49-inch. I also didn't expect to be as accustomed to a curved monitor, but I do miss the 1800 curve of the Dark Matter, and I wish that the Scepter 44 had some curve to it. But if you take into consideration that for $530 you're basically getting two monitors stitched together with a 120 hertz refresh rate, a one millisecond response time, 125% sRGB, you know that really can start to fill some special uses. I know racing simulators have been growing in popularity lately. For those looking for a budget build for a budget racing simulation rig, this monitor might actually be a really good pick. Most 32 by 9 aspect ratio monitors are going to cost you closer to $1,000, so the fact that this is just $500 30 and what you're getting for that uh, really does make this a pretty decent pick for racing simulators in my opinion all right well thank you so much for watching that'll do it for our review of the scepter 44 inch ultra wide gaming monitor let us know what you think about it down in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing i'm jordan with nine to five tools